Hey guys, I'm about to do a pretty large scale sound effects recording session and before I got everything packed up I wanted to give you a quick run through of all the gear that I'm using and why I'm using it. So you'll have to forgive the GoPro footage, it was all I had with me at the time, but I hope you enjoy the behind the scenes look at what goes into a pro sound effects recording rig. I'll start with kind of the least expensive piece of gear here, and that's this Shure MV88. Now this is kind of cool. It plugs straight into my iPhone, which obviously I've got right there. And this is a stereo condenser microphone that allows me to capture a lot better quality than just straight out of the iPhone would. So you can look closely and see that there's a capsule in there. It's got two sides. There's another capsule right in the top here. This is a mid-side stereo microphone. So it records a true mono center and then a side image, and you can kind of mix those together with a mid-side decoder and get an actual stereo left-right out of it. So it's super versatile, really helpful to have just if I'm recording anywhere. I've got my phone with me at all times. I can bring this and get some really good stuff. Plus, I've got this right coat fuzzy so that I can, on the top of it, just put some wind protection and make sure that I can actually record ambiences and some useful stuff instead of getting lots of wind buffeting and nonsense. Next is the Zoom H4n, and I've talked a little bit about this on my channel. I'm not too big of a fan of the H series from Zoom. It's got a couple of condenser mics on the top and an XY stereo pair and a couple of XLR inputs on the bottom So you can use whatever external mics you might happen to have lying around with it if you want I tend to put this in harm's way when I need a recorder that I'm not gonna care about if it gets Say shot or run over or blown up or anything like that. The build quality is all right. It's just plastic It's nothing too crazy But the benefit of that is it doesn't translate handling noise as much as metal So other recorders that are made of metal tend to have a lot more handling noise when you're moving them around. This doesn't have that so much, and it makes it a little bit easier to carry around as a portable. So that's great. I use that again whenever I need something to uh, blow up and not care about, and otherwise I'm going to reach for something else. I've also got the Tascam DR05X for pretty much the same purposes as the Zoom over there. This is really, again, just a recorder to put out somewhere that's probably going to be in harm's way and something bad might happen to it. It might explode, might light on fire, don't know. But it's not expensive enough for me to really feel like that's a huge loss, and it's just better sound quality than something like my phone. So this is, again, just a stereo pair of microphones at the top of it. There are no XLR inputs on it, so you only use the onboard mics. And I've got a Rycote system on the top of it so it can protect against wind. But again, this is not a main recorder in my opinion. This is more just set something out just in case something interesting happens and you have the perspective rather than not. Now the Sony's on the other hand, I'm really a big fan of. I've got the PCM D50, which is actually pretty old at this point, and the PCM D100, which is the successor to the D50. And these are both really, really solid handheld recorders. I like the sound quality out of both of them. They have pretty similar mics. They have similar preamps. The D100 is obviously a little bit better in quality than the D50, both in build and in sound, but they're both really, really solid recorders. I ended up getting this one used for, I think, like 300 bucks or something off of eBay, and it's been rock solid for the last 10 years of recording. I've put it through everything. I've recorded car onboards. I've recorded rain. I've recorded wind. It does great. The D100 is right up there with it, and the build quality is a little bit better. This actually just recently got dropped from about uh, six feet up on its face onto concrete, and uh, this little tiny scratch here, if you can even see it, is the only thing that happened to it. So works perfectly fine still, and it actually got all the recordings intact too. So uh, if I need some really close proximity cement hits, I've got them here. They're both pretty similar, both in build quality and in feature set. The D100 has a little bit better build quality with metal, but that metal actually translates hand movements a little bit more than the plastic on the D50. So if you're going to be leaving something out, I definitely think the D100 is great. But if you're doing any kind of handheld recording, the D50 actually might be a better option just because it doesn't pick up, again, that handling noise as much. They each have level controls on the right side. The D50 has a single control for each channel, but the D100 actually allows you to independently independently adjust the left and right gain so you can choose which level you want each microphone picking up at. Also, these are both adjustable microphone positions, so you can use these in XY just like the zoom down here, or you can put them 120 degrees out from each other and get a little bit more of an immersive and kind of organic sound to them. So I generally leave these recorders in this position so that I can get that nice kind of natural feel to a lot of ambiences that I record. Again, these are fantastic 
perfect for just kind of leaving out somewhere and letting them run. The battery life is incredible. They each have four double A's in them, but I've gotten 24 to 32 hours of recording out of them on each battery set. I don't really find that I'm limited by not being able to plug mics into it. There are no XLR inputs, but the mics are good enough, the preamps are good enough that it doesn't matter to me. The only thing that I wish these did better is the Rycote system on top of it still allows for a little bit of wind buffeting, so they're not the greatest in high wind environments, but otherwise these are really fantastic standalone recorders. Before we get into the sound devices recorders, I want to mention the headphones I'm using, which are Biodynamic DT770s. These are really good flat sounding headphones out in the field. I've also got a pair of the Sennheiser HD280s. If you want a little bit more low end response, these are probably the way to go and they're like a hundred bucks. They're really not that expensive in the grand scheme of things. I absolutely hate the curly cables. I cannot stand these. Whenever I try and get them organized, they just get weird and tangled everywhere. I'd much more prefer these actual straight cables, which are a little bit easier to organize, even though you have to wrap and you have to do other stuff with them. They're just a little bit lower maintenance than this, which I cannot stand. All right, these are my main recorders. This is the Sound Devices 722 and the 788T. These are a little bit older models from Sound Devices than say the Mix Pre series, but these are awesome recorders. They are impenetrable, impervious to conventional weapons with the uh, really serious metal build. This is just a two channel recorder in the 722. I've got it plugged into this microphone over here, which I'll get to in a second. The 788 is right up there in functionality as well, just with more channels and therefore more capability. So whenever I'm doing cars or guns or aircraft or anything that are really kind of demanding and require a lot of microphones at once, the 788 is what I'm going to take out. And again, it's got all the same features and more as the 722. The meters are easy to read. The controls are easy to use. It's a really well-built recorder all the way around. One of the cool features is that you can actually gang all of these channel controls together. So if I want, say, a 5.1 recording rig out to get surround sound, I can just group every single one of these level controls to a single one and it'll adjust the gain of all of them all at once with very very minimal effort and I can listen to each individual channel just by switching each of these back and forth that solos each of the channels on input so again super useful and super accessible controls I use these on every major scale recording like cars or guns or aircraft anything that requires a lot of microphones at once speaking of microphones there are a lot of things to go through here the first and probably my favorite is the Neumann RSM 191. This is kind of the standard for me when it comes to sound effects recording. It's a stereo shotgun mic, and it does this with a mid-side set of capsules. So again, just like that uh, little MV88 over there, this has a side capsule that picks up any audio on the left and right side of the microphone, as well as a mid capsule, which is a shotgun pickup pattern. And again, it's just right out the front of the microphone there. So I can record either decoded XY left, right stereo, as you might expect, or I can record the mid and the side. And then I can have true mono sound effects that I can turn into stereo sound effects if I want to. So there are plenty of uses for that. It's really, really versatile. It sounds amazing. And I'm consistently impressed with how great this microphone performs in pretty much every circumstance I throw at it. I use it with this Rycoat wind jammer here, as well as the dead cat kind of fuzzy thing up there. That really helps with wind. I've actually been able to take this out in, you know, as near hurricane force winds as we get in California and get pristine, clear wind recordings that don't have any buffeting. They don't have any mic overloading. It's just really, really clean, solid wind sounds. So again, I'm really impressed with this microphone every single time I use it. It's unfortunately discontinued, so you can't get it new anywhere but they pop up on eBay every now and then and you can find them if you really look for them. So if you come across one, highly, highly recommend it. Next, I've got a pair of Sennheiser MKH 8020s. These are small capsule omnidirectional condenser microphones. You can see the polar pattern right there with that circle. The mic is actually super small. It's just this front end. This little power adapter here actually adapts the microphone to an XLR input and that way I can use it with pretty much any other recorder out there. I've got everything on these Rycote pistol grips. So again, if I need to just grab and go, it's super easy for me and it's really low maintenance. These microphones are fantastic with low end recordings. So anything that has a lot of low end energy, they really respond well to. And I actually find myself having to roll off a lot of low frequencies from them because they pick up so much so well. These are perfect for ambience recordings. So pretty much whenever I'm out in the field and I need to capture recordings of just ambient environmental sounds, I'll set up a pair of these about six to 10 feet apart 
apart and they are amazing. Again, perfect fit with my Sound Devices 722 right here because I'm able to just set two microphones up and it's really low maintenance, really simple and sounds amazing, like I said. Right above that, I've got a pair of Sennheiser 8040s and that's basically the same type of microphone just in a cardioid pickup pattern. Again, same kind of Rycote pistol grip so I can just pick these up and go. These are probably my favorite individual microphones just because they sound so good on everything. Again, that Neumann 191 over there is a little more versatile because it's a stereo shotgun mic, so I tend to use that more. But if I had to choose, I would probably get one of these microphones as my go-to for everything just because they are so good at what they do. Same deal on the size of these as well. Again, it's just that little front capsule and that unscrews from the power adapter, which plugs into the XLR, goes into this con box on the end of my Rycoat system here. And like I said, easy grab and go so I can just get a pistol grip and run around recording whatever sounds I need. They're phenomenal microphones. I've got the same wind protection systems for these as I do for the Neumann over there. And I tend to set these up as kind of a spaced pair most of the time to record my ambiences. Or if I'm doing something like guns, these are typically relatively close to the actual firearm source because they can take a lot of high pressure sound level and not distort. So they sound really good and again are really versatile. The other pair of cardioid mics that I've got are these Neumann KM84s. Now these are the actual original KM84s. They're not the new 184s. So these are kind of vintage mics. They're uh, a little bit noisier than their modern counterparts, but they sound incredible on pretty much whatever you throw at them. So they're a matched pair just like everything else here. That means their frequency responses are very, very, very close together, nearly identical. So this microphone pair will sound the same no matter which microphone you use on whatever you throw it at. Now these are fragile, so I tend to use them only in controlled environments, and I get a lot of use out of them on music when I'm recording guitar or you know anything like that. But they are fantastic sounding mics on pretty much, again, anything you throw at them. And I tend not to use them in the field just because they're fragile. They do a really, really good job in controlled spaces. Actually, speaking of matched pairs, I also just received this matched set of microphones from Lewitt Audio. These are the LCT-040 Match, and these are kind of the same idea as all of these microphones here. They're a matched set of small cap cardioid mics that are really versatile. They're great on drum overheads, which makes me think they're going to be great for guns because you can get the same awesome level of percussive sounds with microphones that are tailored to drum recording, same as you would on gun recording. So I'm really excited to try those out on something like that. We'll see how they perform. I also just got one of the most unique microphones I've ever seen, which is the LOM Geophone. Now, the Geophone is actually a seismic microphone tailored to be able to use an XLR input or output. And this is really kind of a contact microphone. It's, it's not a traditional microphone that picks up sound through air. You mount it to something solid and it'll pick up the vibrations through whatever it is you put it on. And they're really, really unique sounding. I haven't gotten a chance to try it yet, but I'm really, really excited to put it on something because I have a feeling this is gonna sound really fascinating. Also from LOM, I just got the Micro Uzi Pro and the Micro Uzi, which they look like little lavalier microphones, but they're actually small capsule omnidirectional condenser mics, just like these 8020s over here. But again, these are really, really tiny, and I think they're great for discrete recording. If you need to, say, go into a public space, you don't want to draw attention to yourself, because a lot of times when I'm recording with larger microphones, people will come up and say, hey, what are you doing? And it's like, well, I was recording sound, but now I'm recording sound with conversation. I would highly recommend mounting these to a backpack, maybe on the shoulder pads so you can just cover them with something and make sure they're not visible and then you can go in and actually record really good high quality sounds without drawing much attention to the process of recording which can kind of obfuscate recording sometimes it's it's hard to get uh, lots of conversation about recording out of recordings themselves. The only real difference between the Micro Uzi Pro and the Micro Uzi is the terminations. The Pro has a couple of XLR outputs on them, whereas the standard Micro Uzi just has a 3.5 millimeter jack on it that works really well 
on these sort of handheld recorders. So if you wanted to use, say, the Micro Uzi with one of these Sonys, you can actually plug the thing in to the microphone input on the side, and they don't require any additional power, they don't require any additional craziness, it just works. So this is, again, one of those things I can get a little bit more versatility out of than just a standard handheld with onboard mics. And when it comes to actual lavalier mics, I've got plenty of those right here. So we'll start with the Countryman B3s. I really like these because they're a little bit less expensive than the rest, and they sound fantastic, so I can put them in kind of scary places for microphones. I tend to put the Countryman's either on car exhausts or under the actual hood of cars right next to the engine. So if something gets lost, if something gets burned, if something overheats and fries the microphones, I'm not going to be out too high end of a microphone like, say, these DPAs up here, but I'm going to get the same kind of great sound quality that I might expect from other more expensive microphones. So again, these are really tiny. They're, they're pretty, you know, small. You can get them into really uh, tight spaces, so it's great to use for hard to access spots and they terminate in a standard XLR, so I can plug them straight into a recorder, or I can plug them into one of these giant cables that I use for everything else and run them just like I would any other microphone. They also come with these different capsule covers that kind of change the frequency response of the microphone itself. So if I want to record something that I know is going to be a little bit low-end heavy, I can actually put a capsule that's going to kind of emphasize high-end on it and counteract that, so it'll kind of sound a little bit different, but I can change that directly at the microphone instead of with EQ later. The other lobs that I'm using a lot are the DPA 4061s. These are kind of standard to some degree for a lot of location recorders for dialogue. They sound really, really good. If I open one of these things up here, the only problem with DPAs, apart from being a little bit more expensive, is the fragility of the cable. Lavs are kind of put in strenuous situations a lot of the time, so you need to have a robust cable to keep it connected from, you know, being pulled on or maybe getting caught on stuff. And these are a little more fragile, so that's kind of the only downside to them is I'd have to be more careful with them. Because these cables are so delicate, I tend not to do the over-under wrapping method for them, even though that would be more organized. These kind of have to be wrapped as a standard. And if you guys need to know a little bit more about that, let me know in the comments. I'd be happy to make a video showing you what I mean. But if you really need cable strength in a lavalier microphone, I would highly recommend taking a look at Voice Technologies. These guys have been in business for a long time making really professional lavalier mics for a little bit more affordable prices than the DPAs. They are fantastic for actual voice recordings. I really want to try them out on sound effects recording too, because I think there's a lot of potential to use them. But these guys are great at making indestructible lavs. Their standard mic is the VT500, and this is a fantastic sounding little microphone phone that comes with some of the best accessories that you could possibly ask for with a lav. It's got everything that you'd need to mount it to somebody you're recording. So start with a vampire clip where you can actually fit the lav in, and then it's got these nice little teeth that you can hook into clothing or any kind of garment that somebody's wearing. It's got a little tiny pin system here, so if you need to pin the microphone in the inside or outside of cloth, it can just be mounted in this little tiny slot here and do a really good job of staying on. Plus, you've got this tiny, tiny little windscreen screen that mounts exactly to the microphone too, so that's really good for higher wind environments. And lastly, the standard mic clip that you can put on a tie or underneath a button-down shirt that can work really well with interview audio. Again, this is a really, really fantastic sounding microphone, and I'm really excited to try it on sound effects, not just voices. Now, this microphone just has a standard cable on it, but if you want some really crazy strength, there is the VT500WA, which is a waterproof set of microphones. I've got two of them here. You can actually dump these in water and get hydrophone recordings out of a standard lavalier, which is incredible. I'm really, really interested to see how those sound in both, you know, normal applications, plus sound effects recording, plus underwater. I've also got a VT500X, which again, it's kind of the same microphone all the way around, but this one, it's got even more reinforced cables on it, and again, rated as waterproof. So these can really, really take a beating. And if you're going to be in inclement weather or you're going to be recording, say, I don't know, deadliest catch, these are the microphones you'd probably want to use on anybody who's going to be in front of a camera. If you're going to be recording just straight dialogue, I'd say you should check out the VT100, which I've got right here. This is really good on voices and great for interviews, podcasts, that kind of thing. I've also got the VT401 beige series microphones. So again, you can get these in all different colors to match whatever 
whatever garment or skin type you're working with. I'm gonna take this out here, and you can see this microphone is really tailored to specifically being hidden for camera work. It is tiny. This is a tiny, tiny microphone. I think this is actually the smallest one I've got, but it sounds awesome. So really good for hiding on clothing or putting on talent where you're gonna have a camera in front of them the whole time. All right, last but not least, a couple little accessories here. All of my cables that I've got here are actually custom built, and these are all Mogami cables, either Mogami or Ken Air. So these are kind of the best you can get when it comes to cabling. There's a lot of other XLRs out there that will do just fine. This is not like you have to have this kind of cable or you're never gonna be able to record great sound. The big difference here is really just you're gonna get far less interference and these cables are gonna last a whole lot longer than other slightly lower quality or less well-made cables. And again, they're gonna pass only the audio that you want and not any kind of weird interference or ground. Over here, I've got the Manfrotto Magic Arm, which is really great for mounting microphones to anything that's gonna be moving. It's got a really heavy duty clamp on one end and this articulating arm that I can adjust just by undoing this giant knob here. It'll allow full articulation of this whole arm, and I can mount microphones to the end of it here. It's pretty robust. I did not have very good luck with it the last time I used it because uh, I was recording a sand rail that vibrated a whole lot. If you're going to be using one of these and you've got a uh, material that you're mounting it to that's going to shake, wouldn't really recommend this solution, but if it's going to be relatively stable, like a standard car, then maybe it'll be uh, a little bit more solid. So I'm excited to get that back out into the field and maybe not light my microphones on fire as much as I did last time. Every single one of my mic stands has one of these quick release clamps on it so I can get mics set up really, really quickly. And again, all of my microphones with those Rycote pistol grips have the receiving end on it. So I can just flip these on, click this button, and this is ready to go. I don't have to really do anything else. And to remove it, same process, very, very simple, very straightforward. That makes setup and teardown so much easier. And these things are like five, 10 bucks a piece. If you're not gonna invest in anything else, I would say those are probably the biggest time saver of everything. And of course, with these bigger recorders, they end up eating a lot of power. So I'm using these NP style batteries over here. These are kind of expensive and it's not really great to have to use them, but it allows me to get way, way longer record times out of them. So this 722, instead of using the built-in batteries that give me maybe a couple of hours, I can run this for probably seven or eight hours straight with just one of those batteries over there. The 788 takes a little bit more juice, so I'm probably gonna get more like three or four hours out of each charge, but that's again, running four times the channel count, probably at higher sample rates across the board. So that's everything that goes into the sound effects recording kit that I use. I hope you enjoyed the behind the scenes look. Don't forget to hit like, hit subscribe. I'm over on Instagram at AXK, so come follow me over there. And as always, thanks for watching. <laughs>